Let's take a look at reading number six from the life series and today we're going to talk about irreducible complexity. Now, I love this lesson because we are going to go right to the place where evolution would have to happen at the molecular level. Even Darwin said that incremental improvements were necessary in order for evolution to be true. You get to show your students that the theory fails miserably in this fashion too. Welcome to Test That Is Trained, where our goal is to present scripture and the evidence for Christianity in a way that destroys arguments and pretensions of every kind that sets itself up against the knowledge of God in order to keep our kids in the faith. The purpose of this video is to guide your preparation for this lesson. You will have the correct answers to the questions, learn the key ideas, and gain some ideas for engaging your students in the discussion. Key takeaways for today? Number one, Darwin himself says, if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. Number two, irreducible complexity shows beyond a reasonable doubt that our bodies and the microscopic machinery that makes it work is not the product of numerous successive slight modifications. Taking a look at the questions, Number one, evolution requires slight improvements every step of the way. That is true. Number two, biological systems exist that could not have been produced by slight improvements. True. Number three, microscopic biological systems are naturally very simple. That's a big false. Number four, biological systems are formed by precise quantities and placements of specific proteins. True. And number five, evolution cannot account for the complexity of life we see today. True. Some suggestions for possible exercise and examples. Take some time to compare the flagellum motor to a car engine. How fast would a car go if its engine could go 100,000 RPM? About 2,000 miles per hour. What do you call a car traveling at 2,000 miles per hour? A rocket. Another idea, a mousetrap can give a good demonstration of how removing one piece would render a system unusable. Ask the kids to determine which piece they would remove and still keep it usable as a mousetrap. Then ask them if they removed one piece and it didn't have to be a mousetrap. What could it be used for? One skeptic removed the piece that holds the clamp back and used it as a tie clip. That's clever, but it doesn't show any real function, only a chance use. Plus, you have to know that there's a tie to be held, otherwise it's useless. And what do you remove next? Tie this lesson in with some of the previous lessons on DNA and design. If you're inclined to study how DNA creates proteins from amino acids and how they are folded into shapes for a specific purpose and how any deformation of that shape or a missing piece can render it useless, you'll have a better appreciation for irreducible complexity. It's never a bad time to repeat the fact that if the theory of evolution is correct, then each of us is an accident without purpose, value, or meaning. Remember to use current events or relate things that are happening in your community or in the lives of your kids to make these lessons real. Always ask a bunch of questions. The next session is a recap of the entire life series. Going over each of the 30 questions again is a critical component of the testing methodology. You will be reinforcing what I consider some of the strongest evidence for God our Creator. You get to review the evidence showing the impossibility of macroevolution and illuminate several pieces of evidence that point towards an all-powerful, all-knowing designer. A designer who must have had a purpose for each of us. Respect your kids' intellect, test their knowledge of Scripture and the evidence that supports the claims of Scripture, and you are training them to impact the world for Christ. I speak and train extensively on the topic of properly training our youth, and I'm happy to consider engaging with your organization too. Please send an email to me at b at bracebarber.com if you have any requests, questions, comments, critiques, or ideas. Have a blessed day.